I know sometimes this subject gets old, and the three to one Z rig, the mechanical advantage, just seems to always be confusing. And I, I keep trying to figure out a better way of explaining it so that we understand it. And I don't think that's the problem. What I've started to realize that it's not the answers that we're getting wrong, it's the questions that we're getting wrong. And we're not understanding what the question is, and that's why we can't get an answer that we all agree on. So Yo-Yo here, my Yo-Yo friend and I, are going to try to explain this so that we come up with the right question and not worry about whether an answer is wrong or not. I think we can all agree that when we're talking about mechanical advantage, we're talking about the relative motion of one object to another. We're talking about forces and all of those things. And we're going to worry, we're not going to worry about forces. I'm not going to weigh anything. We're not going to worry about friction. We're going to take that all out. But I don't think anybody would disagree with me that if this is three times the size of this wheel, that if this wheel goes around three times, this one will turn around once. That's our mechanical ad mechanical advantage. We're just talking about a three to one mechanical advantage. Now we get to the part where I think the confusion comes from the fact that we're not looking at this mechanical advantage question in a relative sense. So I have an analogy of a car and the whole point of this analogy is to point out that the answer that you get depends on the relativity of the question. In other words, relative to something else. So you can have a bunch of different answers uh, depending on what the question is. So if this car is going 60 miles an hour or 60 kilometers per hour, whatever, we know that the car is traveling at 60 miles an hour. Now, if I were to ask you how fast the tires are going, most people would say, well, yeah, the tires are going 60 miles an hour too because the car is going 60 miles an hour. They're going to get to the same place at the same time as the car. They're not traveling differently. But if we start to look at things from a different relative perspective, and this is important because my whole point is that you can come up with a different answer depending on whether you're talking about the climber or whether you're talking about a hauling system. So if I ask what the speed of the tire is, we're going to say it's going 60 miles an hour. But if I say what's the speed of the tire relative to the asphalt, you're going to have to admit to me that the bottom part of the tire where it's in contact with the asphalt is moving zero miles per hour. It's not sliding or skidding or anything else. It is in contact with the pavement. So it is going zero miles per hour relative to the asphalt. The top part of the tire relative to the asphalt has to be going twice as fast because it's got to make up for the fact that this isn't going anywhere relative to the asphalt. So the top of the tire is going 120 miles per hour relative to the asphalt. No, relative to the car, what's the speed of the bottom part of the tire? It's 60 miles an hour because the car is passing the bottom part of that tire at 60 miles an hour. What's the speed of the top of the tire relative to the car? Again, 60 miles an hour because the top of the tire is passing the car going the other direction. So you get all these different answers from basically the same question if it's brought into account for what you're asking. What relative to what? Relative to a climber or relative to a hauler? Now when Alright, so we're gonna take the same concept and ask the question relative to the climber or relative to the hauler. Because just like the tire example the question is what we're getting wrong. We're not getting the answers wrong, we're getting the question wrong. And I think this will help us to understand the question. So relative to the climber here, if I take my typical example here, 
in order to lift this pulley up one foot, my hauler who's standing on the ground here, he passes, there's a foot, I've got a mark on here for each foot, there's one foot, he pulls another foot, and now that pulley, that weight has gone up one foot, and he has pulled out two feet. So just like in this wheel, he's turned the wheel two times in order to make it go around once. So that was for the hauler a two to one mechanical advantage. Now let's set this back. And I'm not changing this pulley system, I'm changing nothing except the question relative to who? Relative to a hauler or relative to a climber? So now let's ask the same question. In order for the climber to get this pulley to go up a foot, what does he have to do? And he's going to go with it. So he starts, I'll try to do yo-yo justice there and get him up the rope. But he starts pulling on this pulley and he pulls, there's a foot of climbing line that he's pulled on. So now he's going to pull on another foot of climbing line. Hang on there, yo-yo. All right, so he's pulled up on two feet. There's two feet of climbing line. Now he's going to pull up another foot. And so now Yo-Yo has pulled three feet of climbing line to get himself up one foot. So relative to Yo-Yo, relative to the climber, he has had a three to one mechanical advantage. So it's completely different. Hauler is a two to one mechanical advantage. A climber is a three to one mechanical advantage. It's all relative to who you're talking about. Relative to the climber or the hauler as to whether it's a three to one or a two to one. Just like the answer to how fast that tire is going, it depends relative to what? Relative to the asphalt, relative to the car, relative to the surroundings, your answers can vary depending on your question. So I think if we understand the question, then we can get closer to the answer.